I'm Dr. Paul Cleveland and I'm with Boundary Stone and we're trying to help you navigate your way through a confusing world and our topic today is on government, government power and I kind of like to title this one Chaos, Fear and the Pursuit of Power. <clears throat> uh, I do this, you know, we've just been uh, through the situation where um, the Democrats voted to shut the government down for three days and then <clears throat> decided that wasn't such a good idea and opened it back up. And, you know, you look at this and why, did, why do they do these things in Washington, D.C.? I mean, there's a lot of political infighting and, and it seems like both parties are at odds with each other. But <clears throat> what is really going on with the government? It seems like a lot of what they do is to try to promote as much chaos as they can. I think it was Rahm Emanuel who said, never let a good crisis go to waste. <clears throat> now, why do, they, uh, why do they say these things? Well, I think they do it for a number of reasons, but mainly I think it's for political power. Uh, at the end of the day, what they're really pursuing is political power. And one of the best ways to try to get there is to make you afraid. H.L. Mencken, who uh, was in the 30s, he made a lot of observations about our uh, uh, government at that time. Uh, and he, he put it this way. He said this. He said, the whole aim of practical politics is to keep the populace alarmed and hence clamorous to be led to safety by menacing it with an endless series of hobgoblins, all of them imaginary. <laughs> well, I think those are kind of words of wisdom <clears throat> for a lot of us. You know, Jesus, when he was uh, walked this uh, planet and uh, lived among us, and he was preaching his Sermon on the Mount, <clears throat> he, he said something very similar to people. He said, you know, you're, you run around you're worried about all sorts of things. You're worried about what you're going to eat, about what you're going to wear, <clears throat> about what you're going to drink. And he said, uh, where are you going to live? All those sorts of things. He says, you know, you really ought not worry about those things so much, but recognize that you're God's creature. And as God's creature, God knows what you need, and he's going to take care of you. Now, he, he created you for a purpose, mainly to work in this world, to discover it, and to take dominion over it. And so as we engage ourselves in economic activities and production, we think about what other people need, and we try to... Uh, use our talents and our resources to produce those things that will have something to trade with others. You know, we really don't have to worry about all the uh, what we're going to wear, uh, what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, because in the process of being productive, that'll be taken care of. It won't be our focus, but it'll be taken care of. And the Apostle Paul, likewise, he chimed in on this, and he said, you know... <clears throat> What, uh, what's going on in Thessalonia is that there are a lot of people that are just idling their time away. And when they're idling their time away, what happens is they're not busy producing anything, but they become busy bodies, meddling in the affairs of everyone else. And, you know, that's just not helpful. Um, I would say that much of what goes on in Washington, D.C. today is just busybody meddling where somebody's got a great idea how they're going to run your life. And uh, in order to implement their great idea how they run your life, they've got to garner for themselves political power over you, power to force you to do what they want you to do. And so what? in order to do that, they've got to make you afraid. They've got to get you to want to give up your freedom, your freedom of action. And so they got to have you try to seek security in places where you're really not going to end up being secure at the end of the day. And uh, this is not going to work out all that well. Uh, the British economist, I mean, the British historian, uh, Lord John Acton, who said many great things, but he put it this way. He said, and remember, where you have a concentration of power, in a few hands, all too frequently, men with the mentality of gangsters get control. History has proven that. So, 
you know, we don't need to go down this road. In fact, we'd probably be all be much better off if maybe we shut about 80 or 90 percent of the government down <laughs> permanently, not just temporarily, but permanently. And so, and take power away from those in Washington, D.C. Well, I've been away today. This is Dr. Paul Cleveland with Boundary Stone and wanted to try to help you navigate through this issue of the pursuit of political power. See you next time.